Ah, here they come, our students, just brimming with enthusiasm and highly contagious stomach bugs. Each one a blank slate, a pristine sponge ready to soak up every new idea presented by the teacher and parroted back verbatim on test day. Now that's good learning. Yeah, that's not how it works. It, but, but of course it is. I'm the omniscient narrator. I know everything. Yeah? What number am I thinking of? 17,369. It was four. Maybe the word omniscient is a bit strong. Look, I've been teaching for 12 years, and trust me, these students are anything but blank slates. They may be here for eight hours a day, but for the other 16, they're in all kinds of classrooms. The dinner table, karate lessons, yeah! their sneaper peeper feed, trashy vampire novels. Whoa, easy. They're not all trashy. My point is that these kids are out there, living life, constantly learning things. Some of those things are good, but some, well, let me show you. <clears throat> okay, class, if I were to drop these two balls at the same time, which do you think would hit the ground first? Ooh, ooh, I, I know this one. The basketball would hit the ground first. And what makes you think that, Justine? This one time, I tried to dunk confetti on my baby brother, who kind of crawls like a snail through mud. And it took forever for it to reach the ground, so I know that lighter things fall more slowly. It's basic physics. But her answer's all wrong. All objects fall towards Earth at the same rate, no matter what their mass. That's like falling 101. How did Justine pick up that wrong idea? Sounds like she got it by observing everyday life. The important thing is, right now that wrong idea makes more sense to her than the correct one. It's called a misconception. Well, just give her the right answer and the misconception will go away. It ain't that simple. Who is that? The guy who's been sticking around this school since you were in diapers. The name's Gummerson. I know, it's a little on the nose. <laughs> Here's the deal, Jack. Children need to find ways to make sense of the world around them. We all do. And those ways of thinking are called mental models. Without these models, the world would feel like one bloomin' buzzing confusion. Mental models help us create order out of that confusion. Think of them as our own internal private explanations for why things are the way they are, and do what they do. How do plants grow? How do whales communicate? How can anyone dislike cilantro? Ugh! Hate that stuff. Oh boy. These mental models might be flawed or even completely wrong. But as long as they make it easier to navigate our day-to-day -day lives, we're reluctant to let them go. They're sticky. <laughs> like me. So then, how can a teacher get students to actually learn new concepts? Well, we've already done step one. We found out what Justine already thinks about this idea. If I don't ask students what they think and why, I won't be able to address their misconceptions. But once you know what they're thinking, what can you do about it? Think of Justine's brain as an ecosystem of all the ideas in her mind. Some peacefully coexisting, and others in trouble. <gasps> ah, there it is. The elusive misconception. The one that made Justine think all light objects take longer to fall? And that's the one. Where'd that come from? Well, it looks like Miss Reyes is introducing a new idea to replace the misconception. No matter how heavy or light an object is, gravity accelerates all objects at the same rate. Notice how she's not just presenting a new idea. She's explaining it using language the students are already familiar with. That's called making the idea intelligible. Okay, but this new idea still looks kind of, uh, pathetic? This kind of thing doesn't happen overnight, pal. There's still more work to do. Miss Reyes needs to get Justine to see that this new idea could provide a reasonable explanation for something she's seeing in the world. That this new idea could be plausible. Aw, oh, man! What do you think now, Justine? Hmm. Okay, but this new idea is still a little, uh, shall we say, anemic? Man, you are impatient. There's still one last step. For the idea to really take hold, 
Justine needs to start using it in the world around her to solve new problems and gain new insights. Oh, hey! Hey, what? Oh, yeah. Got them good. This means the idea is now fruitful. Intelligible, plausible, and fruitful. Wow, that's way more involved than the ideas go in, ideas come out story I started with. Told ya. This understanding of how we learn is called conceptual change. It's a useful learning theory, but there are also social and emotional factors that affect learning. Wow, guess I had a terrible <clears throat> mental model of how learning happens in the classroom. Still though, that seems like a lot of work, Miss Reyes. What else don't I know about what you do? <laughs> to discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu forward slash good thinking.